Good morning to everyone. Blessings, divine favor, and the peace of God be with you, your homes, your life, your marriage, and all that you have in life. I pray that God's rule and reign is what you are experiencing today in a changing world and a changing time. Today we're here to learn and to grow and to develop. With a burden in my heart, with seriousness, to herald and cry out to all of us. As we can see, the world is changing. We can see prophecy for those who are learned. We are discerning the times in which we're in. Things is hasting, and the numbers is increasing to another measure. Sin has increased, and God's word is fulfilling itself. So I want to encourage us in a relationship, and I speak to you as a people who is in this eternal relationship as the bride, who's involved with the bridegroom through study, through commitment, to a people who's presenting their lives to God as a living sacrifice. You're a people of faith, a people who entrusted you, yourself, your heart, your mind, into his care. This is who we are, a people of fidelity. Believers are people who's committed. And in this, your spiritual way of being is in the hands of Almighty God. And there's an obedience of faith that we walk in. So pray today in hearing that you have an ear to hear what God's Spirit is saying. The communication, the report of what's being said to us as the body of Christ. And I pray that our hearts is encouraged in believing God. We've seen yesterday, I believe, there was a seven point something earthquake in Haiti. Massive destruction. We can see the strength of fires. They're just not normal fires, they're like infernals. That's rage, and everything is in its path, is burnt to the ground. We have storms increasing with strength. We actually have two storms. One is trailing another. So the Bible tells us about these times. We see over in Afghanistan, we see what's happening to that people, that nation, and we are blessed among many people. So I pray that today you can grow and develop and mature in the things of Christ as we herald perfection, growth, and maturity. Perfection is important. You mature so you won't faint. You won't faint in the things that we see. Your perfection is important so you will pray You will ask God to keep you. Mature enough to cry to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm weak, make me strong. So I'm going to always seek to develop your growth and your development to that place of Christ, that maturity in Christ, that mind that's in Christ. Everything about you have to do with Christ. I don't care who go, who don't go, it's personal. Okay, who quit, who keep running? I mean, let's pray for each other, but I want us to keep our eyes upon the Lord in this world in which we're living in. And so today, I want our hearts to follow in the word. And I ask that today you will go with me to the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter. I want to talk about the way of Christ and the way of Cain. Both are dreamers. The way of Christ is a dream. A dream is what one would like to see. A sequence of things that ponders through your mind. There's a physical sleep when you go into, when we are mentally shut down, but we dream dreams. But you can dream a dream while your eyes is open. In body of Christ, our eyes is to be open. And we have an awesome dream to dream. And this dream is to be implanted, engrafted, 
through by the word of God into our hearts, into our minds. When something is engrafted, it's actually put into something. You're the something that the word of God has been put into. You're the people who eat his bread. You're the people who eat his flesh, which he called meat indeed. So there's a nourishment going on. It's a nourishment that you and I are nourishing our lives on the things of the Lord. So today in John's Gospel chapter, chapter 14, where Christ has shared with them about his leaving. And in this, he knows that the hearts of his followers would be disturbed. But he wanted them to be comforted with knowing that I'm coming back. And as you see, the world is changing. Christ left on a cloud. He's coming back on a cloud. Things is hasting, is running. But again, this is going to be important for us as we live day in and day out. I want to encourage us to keep God first and foremost. In John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says unto him, I am the way. I am the way, course of conduct, thinking, feelings, and deciding things. I'm the way you will decide things. By my life, you're going to decide things. By my life, you're going to decide. You're going to make decisions by my life. I'm the way. You're going to do feelings. You're going to do my feelings. When you go in the way, understand it's a conduct. It's a lifestyle, but whose lifestyle will you be lifestyling? We are new creatures in Christ. You're new people in Christ. Old things are passed away. And in this learning today, looking at Jesus, who is the Christ, understanding that he makes a powerful statement by saying, I am the way. I am that beaten path of feelings and emotions. Because you put on Christ. You took off you. We take off ourselves. We take off ourselves, which we call an old man, who's a very, very ratchet person. This person was born dead in trespasses and sins. Now, I want us to stay in tune to the teaching, especially that comes from this ministry, because I have no message to hasten you off to get wealth and get riches of this world. That makes you forget about your eternal soul. It, this is about a relationship with God that you're to seek him first in his righteousness and all the other wealth and things will be added unto us. So we make God's kingdom first. I can assure you, you will, and your life will be well taken care of. Based on your key, you hold the key. You hold this key as to the outcome of your life. Amen? So in this, I want you to understand the condition that you are in is based on your key. The condition of your home is based on your key. The condition on you leaving here when the Lord come back, whether you be buried or carried, is based on your key. How many know you have keys? Yes. How many know those keys is to be used? Yes. Okay, those keys are to be understood. Okay, now my condition of change based on my key how I use my key, the key that was given me. We have been given keys to the what? Kingdom of God. So when we talk about the way, we're talking about the way of Christ Jesus. We talk about feelings, we talk about decision, we talk about a conduct and all activities as we calculate things, as we, we, we reckon and estimate things of what should I do today? How should I deal with this situation? How should I conduct myself? And keep in mind, in this, when we talk about Christ, we talk about you dreaming a dream. You're dreaming to do something that you would love to do. You would love to be a part of it. And every day is up to you to dream that dream. We look at people who went to the Olympics. They went there because they dreamed the dream. They dream. They constantly want it with craving and desires to be there. There's a craving in me, personally I speak. And I believe there's a craving in you to be with the Lord, to be right with the Lord to be in place with the Lord, to be in line with the Lord. So when we talk about I'm the way, 
let us come to understand the way you have to do with thinking, thoughts. It have to do with the mind, the mind, which is called the I. How you think you will make decision based on your I. What's in your eye? A dream. What do I dream? As a dreamer, a dreamer of Christ. I hadn't always been a dreamer of Christ. That's why I must talk to you about another dreamer. Because there was other dreams I once dreamed. And those dreams was calculated. So today as the body of Christ, in uncertain times, which we don't know what's going to be next. We don't know who's going to be here next. We don't know the next nothing. We don't know but now. All we know about is now, for real. We can remember yesterday, but all we know about is now. Where, where the world is changing and so many is drifting away, mentally straying away from God. I want to encourage us, ne let nothing come in between the way. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm going to make it ready for you. I'm going to get it ready for you. Because where I am, there may you be also. This is transitory, temporary, everything we see. But you, your spirit is an eternal soul and spirit that you are now preparing to be with the Lord. As we talked about the wife, she made herself ready. And I speak to you again because you are the people who's making yourself ready in a changing world. He says, Jesus says unto him, again, 14 and 6, I repeat myself. He communicated, he, he heralded this word, I am the way, comma. I am the way. Before I talked about the truth, let's understand way. Before I talk about life, let's understand way, because you can't get truth if you don't understand way. You don't appreciate life if you don't understand way, because you must transform, we must transform, I must transform my mind. Amen? Because he knows what he bought when he bought into us. He knew that I was carnal. He knew that I need to be converted. He knew that I need to be changed. He said to Peter, to, to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Your form has to change. Amen? I see so many now that the church become a place of pleasure. It comes a place of entertainment. It's a place where we make everybody feel good. You ain't sin, but you feel good about sin. As though God's kingdom have no standard. But there's a standard, saints. I speak to you as people who committed your life into his trust. You're trusting him to keep you, right? You're trusting him to guide you, right? Not just when trouble hit. I trust him for the relationship. I trust him for the commitment that is ongoing forever. So in this word, Jesus says, I am the way. I am your thinking. I am your feeling. I am your thoughts. And they that keep their minds stayed up on the Lord will keep them in what? Perfect peace. Now, Paul talked about our minds being transformed. Why? Because your thinking has to change. Where we're going to transform, a transfer, I'm going to move away from my mind and go into a different mind. Paul also said to be carnal minded is death. But to be spiritual minded is life and peace. We're talking about the way. The way is a course that your mind is on a course, constantly on a course, a course of Christ. And in this course, there's dreams that you dream. In there, there's a sequence in your thinking that lines up with the Lord. Okay? Now, the way is that I and you will constantly hold fast to the key. The key that causes me to move and work patiently. Causes you to work patiently. Because you use this key so you can have a glorious condition. Or you can use the key that Cain used and have a miserable condition. Everything has to do with a key. Key give access. The mind, the eye, the thinking give access. Those who understand dreams and aspirations, whereas knowing that you got there because you kept it pondering, you kept calculating it, you kept reckoning it, you kept it on your mind. Amen? Things you dream of having, you kept it as a frontlet. You kept it before your face. 
You kept, it, you kept talking about it. You kept going to people, reminding people about what you've been thinking about. You say, I was thinking about doing this. And you keep it as a secret of thing that don't just go away. He says, I'm the way. I'm the way. I'm the way. In this way, you will ponder. You go ponder drinking my blood. Symbolically speaking, not physically, it's a metaphor that I would drink his life. I would drink, I dream of drinking his life. I dream of drinking his life. Like you dream the dreams that you dream. You, you nourish yourself on it, right? You, almost like you make a plate of a bowl of it and you just feed yourself. You feed your mind. You feed your eye. You feed your understanding. You feed everything about you. You feed yourself in the counsel of what you want. When they come down to the Lord, how many of you have to feed yourself? And those who feed themselves, then they grow and they develop and they mature and they stabilize and they move forward in the things of God. This dreamer is named Jesus, who is the Christ. He dreamed of going to prepare a place. He dreamed of coming back on a cloud. This is before him now. And in this dream, he won't dreamers. How is it that I'm thinking of bringing you to a place you hadn't even prepared to come to? You hadn't prepared because you hadn't kept me on your mind. Keeping the Lord on your mind is essential. Amen? It is absolutely necessary that you keep Christ on your mind. In the days and times we're in. In destruction, know what I hear people say? Oh my God. In pain, know what they say? Oh my God. In their suffering, in their affliction, the words out of their heart, oh God, have mercy. Oh God, oh God. But before that time came, did you dream of eating his life, drinking his life, committing and trusting yourself to his life. Then he says, I'm the truth. Truth, as, as pertain true to what's true, what's true to God and the duty of man. So in this, truth is going to be important. In this, understanding how important truth is. Everything you do should line up with the, towards God and man. You don't even deal with people outside of truth. Your duty towards mankind has to do with you lining up with truth as it has to do with God. I'm not going to dig deep into truth today. We're going to focus on weight, but I'm going to mention the other one, and the life. And the life. If you don't get the way right, you definitely won't have the truth. Truth is essential. Life is essential. But how can you go out the truth and go out the life if you don't want the way? You have to want the way. You have to crave for the way. You have to need the way. You have to need the things that he's calling us into. Now, as a wife, you are, who makes herself ready. As a people who've entrusted their life into the Lord is how I speak to you today. And the days ahead, I want you to just take notice. Things are measuring to his next level. And your relationship and your commitment and your trust and your allegiance is imperative that you understand you travel in the way. And in this way, you wake up dreaming like you dream for your houses when you didn't have one. You dream for your cars when you didn't have one. You dream for your marriages when you didn't have one. You dream for wealth when you didn't have wealth. You know how you dream? It just stays on your mind. 
And because it stayed on your mind, you pursued it with passion. You worked for it. You went after it. And whatever it took that you thought was necessary, you did it. You, your children, you dream. I've seen mothers and fathers sacrifice to make sure their children have better than what they had. They dream, they dream, they dream, and they keep it on their mind. They keep it as a front list. How many know Christ ought to be the best dream, the first dream, the most important dream for you in your life? The way is important. This way. Now, in this way, because you're going to decide to nourish your life in this. We're going to go to Proverbs, then we're going to go to the book of Jude, and that's probably where we'll stop at for today. Proverbs chapter 23, because we're going to talk about and understanding the way Jesus said things. Jesus said things that he meant. He didn't say things just to be said, because those things he said is doctrine. Those things of your manual, of your textbook, have to do with what is written. He watches over his word to perform it. So in this Proverbs chapter 23, look at this piece, starting at verse Six. Verse 1 on down is important, but we're going to jump into verse 6, 7, and 8. Because it's going to be important that throughout the day as to where you, how you think, and how you feel, and how you conduct yourself, and your thinking. Now, your thinking is always pondering something. And where your treasure, that's where your heart is. All right? He says, eat thou not the bread. we in verse 6. we in Proverbs chapter 23, verse 6. Eat thou not the bread of him that has an evil eye. An evil eye. Now, this is not literally talking about food. This is a metaphor of what he's saying because there's a nourishment for the soul. Eat thou not the bread of him that has an evil eye. Evil eye, eye defines as a mind. The mind is where one thinks. So you have to watch what you're eating. You can't sit with anyone and eat you know, anything. Amen? So he said, eat thou not. Don't nourish the bread of him that has an evil eye. Neither desire thou his dainties meat, his delicacies, his meat. Because this is talking about what we understand in the natural, what one uses to nourish his life and to live off of. What are you living off of? Who are you living off of? What music are you living off of? Who's feeding you? What is that you like? You, you love it, you like it, you love it, because you always go back to eat on it, right? He says, neither desire his daintiest meat, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, says he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So, the church is having a problem with going in the way. And there's a reason why some of us is having a problem with going in the way of Christ is because where we eat at. Eating has to do with nourishment where you constantly take it in and even that your body breaks it down and send it throughout your being. Your body takes your food and put it in all the important, take the nutrients and it put it throughout your being. God's word is to be put into your heart and be put out through your being. So all of your members, your eyes, your hands, your acts, your deeds, everything about you will be in the way, in the way of Christ. I said that in the way of Christ. I, I love you in the way of Christ. I forgive you in the way of Christ. I'm patient in the way of Christ. I'm long-suffering in the way of Christ. He says, because this has to do with nourishment. We nourish all the time. You better mind. We have to mind what we're nourishing. Even when I stand before you, I want you to nourish what's being, I want you to pay attention what you're nourishing on. What am I saying? And the dainties, I give you stuff that make you feel good, but it's not the truth. You better be careful not to eat it. I tell you about getting houses and land, hadn't told you about eternal life, you better be careful. I'm telling you, you have tomorrow and you really don't, you better be careful. The fool said he was going to tear his barn down and build bigger. But the fool didn't know this time tomorrow you won't even be here. Dream a dream. Dream the dream of Christ. Have a sequence of thoughts running through your mind, the decisions and activity that you are to be moving about when God let the sun set, when he let it rise. 
He woke us up this morning to grow and to develop and to come here just to learn, not to be entertained. And to develop in your heart and your mind and your soul whom you committed yourself to. How many have committed themselves to trust in God all the way? All the way. He says in verse 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, as he decides in his heart, as he ponder and calculates in his heart, as he imagine in his heart, so is he. To that measure is he exists. To that degree, he exists. So that person is telling you that God understands sin and you can live in the kind of way, that's in his heart. Don't eat it. He believed that. But don't you eat it. Because that's not the way of Christ. It's amazing how somebody can come in and tell you something that's not doctrine and you'll eat it. You're nourished on it. You want more of it. I want more of it. But Christ operate with doctrine and teaching as it is written. I say what my father say. Now, how many know those who eat, you have to have a reverence and respect for the food you eat? How many know you only eat what you respect? How many know the reason you don't eat it? You don't respect it. You don't have a desire for what you don't respect. There's things he asked me to eat I wouldn't eat. I didn't have a desire for some of his doctrine. Do I have a witness in that? There's some things that he asked me to do. Didn't make sense. It didn't make sense to my thinking, and I wouldn't dream that dream. A glorious church and a glorious people is about the things of the kingdom, because we are kings and we're priests. As we continue, he says, but his heart is not with thee. That same person told you to eat. Says unto thee, but his heart is not with thee. That same person is counseling you to do this and do that. His most inward man is not with you. Can you imagine that? Somebody teaching you and feeding you, but their heart is not with you. So what they'll do, they'll merchandise you, they'll use you, or they'll get you to do things and go along with things because they want what they want. And they have you nourishing on things, but they can care anything about you. Christ care about the people he feeds. Christ care about you. He's not wasting his time in going away to prepare a place for me. Can you speak for yourself? Could you say to him, it's not a waste of time. What you went to get ready, I can't even imagine what it's going to be like. But I want you to know I'm preparing myself. When you come back on the cloud and the archangel blows the trumpet and that major change that takes place, I'm planning to go back to the place you have prepared. Now, that's a dreamer. That's a dreamer. I dream of having certain, this car, I want a Mercedes so bad. I dream when I first got saved of having one. And maybe 10 years after being saved, I didn't let that dream go. I finally got one. Because I kept dreaming it. And I finally got what I dreamed. Some of you have education because you dreamed it. Some of you have a better house because you dreamed it. Some of you have money in the bank because you dreamed it. It's amazing when it comes down to earthly things, you can dream well. But when it comes down to the things of God, when it comes down to what he will help me to ponder as a sequence of things that I want you to keep on your mind. Keep my word on your mind. Eat my word like it's meat. Eat and drink my word like it's blood. How many know the body, the importance of blood in the body? Life is important. Blood is important for life to be in my body. Is it God's word important for you to live? Or you just need money and wealth and education and success and fame? No, body of Christ. No, not us. We need him as our necessary food. Amen? Notice what he says next in this. Because we're going to have a balance. Listen, I'm not telling you not to go out there having the things of this earth. But I want you to make God's kingdom first. Amen? Because you're going to find everything you get don't even know you. 
the house don't know you, the car don't know you, the diamond ring don't know us. But who know us is the one who created us. First and foremost, he says, but his heart is not with thee. So there's some people I don't encourage you not even go sit with. Amen. There's some stuff I see on YouTube for, for church folks. I wouldn't sit with it. I wouldn't sit with it. Because what they're trying to get me to eat is a bunch of hype. Some stuff have to do with wealth and money. But a lot of it doesn't really preach righteousness. They don't lift the standard of Christ. And the Bible says, without holiness, no man should see the Lord. Verse 8 is critical because he said, The morsel which thou hast eaten, thou shalt vomit up. And loose thou sweet words. See, because you keep eating garbage, you're going to lose yourself from the truth. When you lose yourself from the truth, you mar the truth because you don't want the truth because you don't want the way. Let me go slow. I want you to get this. The morsel which thou hast eaten, you did nourish on it, right? You nourish on things that was make you feel good. Hey, it's okay. God understand. There's some things that I was told in walking with the Lord that it's okay. It's okay, and God understand. Because grace will cover it. But grace don't cover what sin is. Is it is raining? You know who covers sin? Death. Death reigned where there is sin. Now you telling me to sin while I'm with Christ and grace gonna cover it? Well, it says. Should we continue in sin that grace may abound? Now, wanted me to nourish and eat what was going to make me sick, which was going to mar my life. It was going to mar my marriage. Mar means to make it where it is in ruins. Because I'm going to eat the Danish. God understand. Ain't nothing wrong with a little this, a little that. Ain't nothing wrong with it. How many know every doctrine, you ought to have it in you? His life is to be nourished, though. His life is to be eaten like you eat your necessary physical food. You got to eat this word. Amen? Listen to me. Notice what you've been eating is made you healthy or is making you sick. Follow your name. Follow what you touch. I, I, you should be able to look around and say, what I've been eating have done me well. Amen? It's made a healthy me, a healthy name, a healthy home, a healthy everything. That's what we should be saying, right? How many can see that he healed you and made you healthy? What you've been eating have made you healthy, right? Because with his stripes, we are what? Healed. We didn't get sick. We was already sick, right? What I was going to eat was going to make me sicker, worse. What I was told by the church folks, that's why you better watch who you said to eat with. God understand. Amen? We're talking about the way. We're talking about feelings. We're talking about decision. We think about, we're talking about things that you're going to calculate. You know, I, I, I've been exchanging some things with some coins, and I pull that, my, my phone out, and I look at what type of gain I've gotten. I, I'm constantly calculating my gain. And then I look and see where I'm having some loss sometimes. Amen? But because I'm involved with it, I pay no attention to my loss because I'm dreaming a dream. Amen? So I'm not bothered by this. But see, Christ, there ain't no losses. Amen? There is no losses. So the way, what way, what, what way are you thinking? What's your way of thinking this week? Because you made a decision based on your thinking. You went to some places based on your thinking. As long as that thinking was of Christ, you enjoyed where you went. You enjoyed what you did. You enjoyed what you bought. You enjoyed everything because he said, I'll come to give you life and give it. 
I didn't come to subtract and take from you. I come to give you life and give it more abundantly. When he asked us to come in his way, come into my thinking. That's why Paul said, brethren, present your body to God as a living sacrifice, which is your reasonable service. Most rational, intelligent thing you can do is give all of your beings away. And when you do that, he said, make sure it's holy. Because you're going to give your mind away. You're going to give all of you away. You got to give your mind, right? Because my mind is in my body. You're going to give your heart away, right? I'm going to sacrifice what we're doing. He says a living sacrifice. When I sacrifice, you sacrifice. You give your heart, you give your mind, and you give your soul in your body. While you're alive, not while you're dead. While you're alive, you give it to him, right? Which is the most rational, intelligent thing you can do. Because in this, you will learn to walk in the way. That's why he said, not, be not conformed to this world. Because he, he's letting us know there's, there, there's a way that you can be conformed to. You can be folded and molded and shaped and styled in this direction that is so not the dream. And what I find in the body of Christ, people are trying to dream two dreams. They're trying to dream a dream where they're over here with the world and over here with the devil. And then they tell each other, God understand. That's what I was told, God understand. Okay? How many want someone to have two lovers in their life? It's not even normal, but that's what's going on now. You can have a wife and a girlfriend and a boyfriend now and still be married. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they call it open marriages. This young lady told her husband one day, she says, I saw a guy in Atlanta I would like to meet. He said, let's get in contact. They got on Facebook, found the guy and contacted me. They flew to Atlanta. His wife and the boy, the guy she wanted to be with, is walking, holding hand, and the husband's behind her. Don't eat the food. Don't go in the way. Don't go in their thinking. Don't go in their decisions. I'm saying this to the church because church folks is doing it. Church folks want to be in the club and in the church. You're going to love one or you're going to hate one. That's why I'm going to talk about the dream of two. Because you're going to run greedily after one of them. How many can't get enough of Jesus? How many hunger? Hunger. I have to. I need it. I wake up 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning. I need it. I'm meditating on his word. I need it. And like I calculate with my coins, I calculate with the word. I reckon with the word. I reckon in my mind. Because sometimes my thinking is not his thinking. And when I see the thinking is not his thinking, then guess what? He said, because it's going to, verse 8, it says, what did he say? The morsel which thou eatest. See, sometimes your feeder is you. Lean not to your... How many of your flesh will feed you? But the key that you use will determine your stance. It will determine your condition. So guess what? I've had some stuff to come up in my mind. It wasn't the devil. It wasn't my mama. It wasn't my wife. It was me. And when I heard the conversation, I say inappropriate. And I loose myself from you, flesh, because it's my carnal mind thinking because it had to do with a reality that I was facing. And you know, when you start facing your reality, you start to involve thinking about yourself. And you know, when you think about yourself, you try to save your life. <laughs> you come up with decisions, you come up with thinking, you come up with activities and action that you start doing. And guess what? It was a dream. And when you start thinking about saving your life, you can see yourself happy. Oh, I can have this and I can have that. But sin was involved. So, because if I would have ate it, it would make me sick. He said, the most thou has eaten, shall thou vomit up. See, that thing that you nourish on is going to make you so sick. It's going to sicken you. I can relate. How many already have been down that road? I done taste some stuff. I, I, was, I, I just felt good about it. 
I, I didn't see that wrong with it because God on this day. And it made me sick. And it makes folks connected to you sick. Yeah. It makes the community sick. Yeah. It makes everybody sick. So, and loose thou sweet word. Ooh, now, I want you to get that piece. How many know Jesus is the sweet word? Yeah. You start eating that garbage, you're going to loose the sweet word. You keep leaning to your own understanding, you're going to lose. You're going to lose Christ. That's the sweet word. You eat your own counsel, you're going to lose. Loose means to mar and to damage and destroy. All right? You remember the Bible? Let's go this in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, I believe. Because when things exalt itself against the knowledge of God, this is teaching, this is learning. But the days and times we're in, see, we've made decisions that cause our condition to be as it is. We've made decisions that cause our condition to be as it is because it was the key that you used. Didn't Christ give keys to the kingdom? Those keys consist of doing what? Binding and loose. Binding and loose. So therefore, I loose myself from that which is not of God. You are to loose yourself. 2 Corinthians. Start at verse 4. Well, we'll start at 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not what? We're in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. We walk, we live, we exist in the flesh, but we don't what? War. Right? We're not fighting against physical flesh, right? He said, for the weapon of our warfare is not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down a what? Stronghold. Sometimes some strong conversation. It's some strong Danish. It's some good tasting stuff. Anybody uh, uh, help me out today? How many have had some good tasting stuff to show up? Hmm? And you can, how many ever thought of food you wanted to cook and you can just see it? <laughs> There's some things mentally going on in your mind that you're feeding off of that's unhealthy. If you eat it, it's going to make you sick. At the same time, it makes you sick and make you lose yourself from the sweet word. It make you lose yourself from the relationship of commitment of fidelity as a wife. And in this teaching, I'm going to teach you about a whore. She's one who God created. See, God created all things. That's why we can call her a whore. Amen? He created the angels, right? But were they faithful? Okay? Whore defines as idolatry, one who goes into a, something to get their own gain. Yeah. I'm not talking physical. I'm talking spiritual. But if you go spiritual, you will go in the, in the physical too. Okay? So understand, if we talk about her, we're going to talk about two women, which is both of them are mothers. The mother is known as a source of something. Amen? You can't find me without my mama. My mama is a source who carried me. Amen? She was the, 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 the room that brought me here. Say, how did you get here? They're going to look for the mother. The father plays his part, but it's the mother. So we're going to talk about her because the harlot mother is an abomination. And so what makes you sick is something that's foul and not healthy. But keep in mind, Proverbs says, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Proverbs encourages us not to eat the dainties and its meat. Now, once you do, it's going to do two things. It's going to make you sick. So when you see Brother Curl again, you say, who is that? You ever heard those saying, they sin sick? You ever seen what sin do to homes and families and communities and marriages and wealth and money? You ever seen what sin does? Sin messes you up. You seen the guy Epstein who was rich and owned his own island? He's dead and gone. Yeah. Amen? Sin will make you sick. Yes. And then you saw everybody who got in bed with him, yeah. the, 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 the Microsoft guy, he kind of hate the day he ever went with him. But you ate his meat. Right. Yeah, it, it makes your marriage sick, didn't it? Yeah. Bill Gates, it, it made your marriage sick, right? See, there's some things you can eat that'll make you sick. Yeah. Then it'll make your marriage sick. Yeah. Then it'll make your children sick. Yeah. Then it'll make everything you own sick. But you want it. One thing about righteousness, the only way you eat it is that you hunger for it. 
Amen? This seem personal today? This seem personal? Feel like he's talking directly to us? He is, because he is. Amen? I don't know what the earth's going to quake. I don't know what the storm's going to do. But I can tell you this. He shared with me that everything is going to another level. You know we got more than one variance? It keep mutating, right? Because, see, sin ain't making nobody sick yet. <laughs> Stuff you ought to be vomiting out. Okay? Now, you don't want to wait till it get, make you sick to try to get it out of you. Take your key and loose yourself. Been trying to bind the devil and loose the devil. You, you, let me, we've been, I hear saints, I bind the devil. You can't bind no devil. If you bind the devil, his ministry can't kill, steal, or destroy. Now, be wise enough to know if you bound him, if I, if I want me bound him, then nobody else should die today. There'll be no more Job episode because the devil been shut down. See, we're so unlearned because we've been entertained. We don't even know the doctrine because we don't study the textbook. We entertain folks with the textbook. It says, verse 5, casting down imaginations. Casting down. I'm going to ruin this. And guess what? I had stuff to talk to me. I remember driving that truck. It'd be in the truck for me all day long. And I said, I rebuke you, devil. I rebuke you, devil. I resist the devil. And I bind you, devil. You ever had a gnat to leave one ear and go to the other? Yes. A mosquito bite you in the back, then bite you in the head. And I was getting tired, like, well, where, where you at? What's going on? He said, ain't the devil, it's you. It took me a minute to get that. And some of us, because your greatest battle is you. Because the devil is not sovereign. So how can he be at your house and my house and your house? All, how can he? He is only one. Why make him be on this level that he's not? He has power, he has an organization, but he can't be everywhere at the same time. Only God can do that. Now bind that to your head. Bind that knowledge to yourself. He's going to be bound for a thousand years. It's going to take a great change. Then when he's loose, he's going to come back up on the earth and start the war of Armageddon. Makes sense to us. Now, the point I want to make you casting down imagination in every, in every high thing that exalts itself against the what? And do what with it? Thoughts is thinking. But if you hadn't gone in the way, you won't deal with the thoughts. You make excuses for the thought and justify the thought, and you know the thought have nothing to do with doctrine. When they hit me, I'm going to hit them back. Now, guess what? You ain't going to put your hands on me. <laughs> Is that your thinking? You ain't going to stare me down because I'll get back with you. Is that your thinking? It used to be mine. and I ain't always, <laughs> My growth now hasn't always been there. And even when I hear him now, I say, oh, I lose myself. Because you're about to make me get into my flesh and do something that I'm going to regret. Because, yes, I hold the key to my condition. Say that with me. I hold the key that was given me. And that key helped me to manage my condition. And I don't have a jacked up condition. I don't, I know, I don't walk around with this condition of being sick no more. Ill. See, the other food that made me sick, it made me sick when I was a sinner, and I refuse to eat it now. But has it come back to serve me? Yes, it has. Amen? Now, thought to the obedience of Christ, having in a readiness. How are you prepared? How many of the wife was ready? She prepared herself, right? She wasn't just churching. She was dreaming a dream. It says, to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. How many know you can't do nothing you don't agree with? You can't do nothing you had nourished your life on. I'm able to do what I do now because I nourish, I eat, and I agree with it, and I bind myself to it. Now I'm able to rise up as a new creature and walk as a new man, walk as a new husband, walk as a new friend, walk as a new brother in Christ. I'm a new creature. Are you a new creature? Old things are what passed away. Are you here for doctrine? Or are you here for entertainment? Are you here to learn about this world? Or are you here to learn about the kingdom of God and his righteousness? Let's go follow one more. I'm just going to plant today. We're going to work it some more. Let's go to the book of Jude. Jude is the last one of the, the book before the book of Revelation. It's only one chapter. 
Jude is a very powerful book because people come in for a reason. And Jude, we're going to skip down, then I may come back up. Now, let's go down to verse 8. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers. Filthy dreamers. Now, he's talking about some filthy dreamers. A dream is what one would like to see. And imagine somebody standing, if you, I'm preaching to you because I'm a filthy dreamer. I want you to be able to identify a filthy dreamer. Amen? Don't be moved by the suit. Don't be moved by the shoes. Don't be moved by the cars people drive. Discern. Amen? Because Jude said best. He said they crept in unaware, unnoticed. You didn't even notice. That's why I want you to be so learned. Don't be moved by the suit. Be moved by the learned tongue. Is the tongue long? Learned? Is it not? Do they put their doctrine in here? Do they put it's a pure word? Okay? The lady was speaking the other day. She couldn't speak enough English for speaking heavenly languages. And so a lot of what she said, I had no clue. Because she didn't come back and interpret. But she said, hear me now. Hear me. Paul said, you know what Paul said, right? If you can't speak, when you speak and they don't, in another tongue, they don't understand it, right? I'd rather that you speak with a tongue they understand than to speak with a language that they can't. But you tell them to eat it and eat it and eat it. I say, this is not how the kingdom operates. I flick, I turned it off. Somebody sent it to me for me to listen to it. I'm like, this is not healthy. Then they get this religious tone. God said Oh, God said it. I mean, the way it's worked. I, we all have our own ways of ministering. Yes. But it needs to be lined up with the word. You go back and see that Christ do that. Go back and see that John the Baptist do that. Go back and see that Paul do that. They the ones said in the teaching of the doctrine, and all you're getting, get an understanding. So 90% of what she said, I don't know what you're talking about. Because you're trying to stay spiritual with the things of God, but you're talking with a way that I can't get it, all right? Not to get off course on that. He says, likewise, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignity. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a relevant accusation, but, the Lord, but says the Lord rebuke thee. For these speak evil of those things which they know not. Wow, imagine you eating that. I'm speaking evil. You know people is eating this? Yeah. Just imagine how church dumb people are. How unlearned we are because of emotionalism. Yeah. Now, he having to write this book because they don't crept into church teaching. Okay? But I want to get to this piece. He says, but they, but what they know naturally, you understand it? As brute beast animals. In those things, they what? Corrupt themselves. Verse 11. But woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of who? Cain. Let's stop right there. They've gone, they've moved in the way of who? Cain. 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 Cain had feelings. Cain had thoughts. Cain made decisions. Cain. Cain killed his brother. They ran into just like Cain. How many know there's people who move just like Cain? Because you have your way. Is making sense to us. I pray that it is. Because in your, you have the key to your own condition. How many know Cain had the key to his own condition? How many know the Lord tried to get him to put that key away? Didn't he? Didn't he try to get him to rule over it, pull it down, destroy it, right? Now, did his condition of impact other people? First, impact the person he prayed upon. Then it impacted his mother and his father who was Adam and Eve. Then it impacted his children because he became a fugitive and a beggar yeah. But it was a feeling. It was a feeling of hatred, hostility. He even had a murdering spirit. I want to say this to those who carry guns so you can protect yourself. You got a murdering spirit on you. Whether you like it or not, whether you want to hear it or not, I'm not trying to feed you something that's not the dream. I'm feeding you the dream. He told Peter, put up the sword. Now, one thing about the flesh, the flesh don't want to hear. If you need your gun to protect you, you just fire the angels. Yes, 
So therefore, when you go to the red light, don't expect the angel to be there. Because the people of God entrust their life. They put their life, they put their life into his care. When the storms come through, the angels... The cerebrums that bring the thunder and the lightning and the strong winds, you know God calls them to ride past your house. And if they tear up something in the process, it becomes a blessing. Every time a storm hit my house, I call it a blessed storm. <laughs> the storm that hit our church, we needed a roof anyway. The blessings of the Lord make Long as you're nourishing your life, and I can say this because this church nourished on the word. He said, I was hungry, you fed me, naked, you clothed me. Things that we do have to do with the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So we keep dreaming the dream. Guess what, glory to God? We'll never be ashamed. Out of 30 years of ministry, 30, not 30, about 33, 34 years of ministry, we have no sad stories. Because we dream the dream. We go in the way. We go in the feelings. We go in the thoughts. We go in, in the decision of Almighty God. I calculate constantly, and I make decisions using the keys of righteousness. And when it's not right, I loose ourselves from it. I say, no, this is not going to be here. I don't care if the musician was wrong. You're not going to be here. Brother Curl, you're wrong. Sit down. We're going to loose ourselves from craziness. Yeah. Make sense? I respect God. When you respect God, you'll eat his word. If you don't, you're going to eat the other food. And what you're going to do you're going to lose yourself from that sweet word. Because you don't dream the dream of the way of Christ. You dream the dream of Cain. Now Cain, it tells us, woe unto them for they have gone in the way of Cain. Gone in the way. You moved in the way of Cain. How many know you're going to have to make decisions based on his way? You, you hearing that? I know how you feel, but does that feeling go against his way? If it go against his way, loose and don't eat your own meat, your own dainties, or whoever's telling you, I wouldn't do this if I were you. I'll do this and I'll do that. Make sure you remain up under divine guidance because grace is covering your life in a ruling way. As I prepare to close, grace rules where there's righteousness. So what do I dream all day long? Righteousness. Long as, I'm, long as I'm dreaming and walking in feelings and thoughts that lines up with righteousness, guess what? Guess what happened? Grace abounds in ways I ain't never thought. Grace moved in miraculous ways like, wow. And I look around and say, that's the grace of God. Why grace respect me? Because I respect righteousness. It's a condition. Amen? I like my condition. I, and guess what? It's up to you to have a condition that you enjoy. I enjoy my condition. My condition is the joy of my life. Amen? Are you enjoying your condition in Christ? You enjoying the condition that your heart and your mind and your soul in? It's, it's a guy did something driving. You know how people drive again. They do some crazy stuff. And when he did it, I could feel some nourishment coming from my flesh. Listen closely now. And when it came up to my understanding, these are my words. No, I lose myself. When I lose myself, I destroyed it. That's what, when you lose something, you destroy it. When you don't lose it, you start to, and then you start to eat it. And then it's going to make you sick. You ever say, I don't know why I did it. You ever say, I hate I did it. I'm so stupid. I'm going to get with them. No, you're not. God going to get with them. You're going to calm down. <laughs> yeah. Your ways is not his ways. You know, the east will never meet the west because they don't travel towards each other. So, I wanted to piece this together in a way that you can get it. Christ is the dream. It is what you will keep on your mind. You say, no, I desire to see every day your kingdom, your rule, your reign, your leadership. I dream that. And ever since I've been dreaming that, that's from my house to this house. I have no sad stories at my house. I could have. And could have some sad stories at this house. Amen? But I learned if you, you respect that house, you respect this house. 
Because it's the same man at that house is the same man coming in this house. Amen? I'm a dreamer of heavenly things. I'm a dreamer of righteousness. Amen? We got ministries here, and you, you, those who know, every ministry that we have put together, they have prospered. We've never begged. That's why I don't care who don't pay tithe. That's your business. I don't care who don't clap their hands. That's your business. Amen? I don't care who don't want to bear fruit unto righteousness. That's your business. But everyone who's involved with God, they eat his doctrine. So when it comes down to my time, my talents, my finances, I promise you, I eat the doctrine. And guess what? All grace, and I see grace stands in such strength. And the things that grace be doing, like, wow. Wow. Yeah. Grace makes sure that this will work together for your good. Why, Grace? You love the Lord. How you know I love the Lord? You keep his word. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my word. Did that make sense? Nobody has to tell me to do nothing because I read the doctrine. A- amen? Children, we all can get this. Even as I speak this, I'm seeing so many children being stolen. Parents, keep your children closed because the dark world is seducing and moving. You got a young generation now, the X, Y, Z generation, don't want to hear nothing. You look at their minds has been altered because they've been eating the meat and the food of those people. Now they're poisoned. Amen? So today I pray this word is going to be food to you, something to think about. Again, in the detail of this right here, it's going to lead us to the understanding of a wife who made herself ready and a whore. And with the whore, you're going to, every angel that went out the things and idolized it over God falls in that category. But he comes here and he finds what we call a woman. And this woman become a source in the earth realm. And everyone who get involved with this woman who's called a whore, they drink her wine. Wine is the influence of the spirit of darkness that get one intoxicated. Amen? So when I look at you, what's your source? Who's your source? This woman has the ability to give wealth in many things, but she's going to have a great fall. It's also told to the people who's involved with her, come out from among her, my people. Come out from among her, my people. She's your source, but she got an end. Now, come over, back over here and, and don't let the sweet word be destroyed by your hands. Amen? Cain, what did Cain do with the sweet word? Didn't the sweet word come to him? Saints, so are you listening? Didn't the sweet word come to him before he? What did he do with the sweet word? He destroyed it. He loosed himself from it. So God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. This day is about salvation for your eternal soul that's going to spend eternity somewhere. You have eternity of death. You have eternity of life. God will that all will come to repentance and come into life. Amen. You have the blood running warm in your vein. You're clothed in your right mind. You have your health and you have your strength. You can make a decision right now to accept Christ into your heart. Jesus, who is the Christ, the Son of God. He rule and reign. He's alive and well. He's interceding. And he wants you to come to a place that he's preparing for us. Amen? But you must be willing to come in and take the tutelage up on repentance. You must be willing to come in and let him bath you and wash you and clean you. And when he do all those things, he fill you with his spirit. And he'll measure to you to the full measure of the statute of Christ into a perfect man. Yes, you'll grow up. The little boy behavior, the little girl behavior, all the things of the flesh, you'll put it away from you because he's going to make you a new creature, a new personality, a new personality who've handed their life over to God as a living sacrifice. So my mind is really the mind of Christ. Say with me, my mind is the mind of Christ. I gave myself away to him as a living sacrifice. Thank you, Father, for keeping me and giving me keys to rule over my condition. This is a house of prayer. This is a house of prayer. This is a moment of prayer. Look around. Prayer is needed now. Aches is in our bodies now. Inflammation is in our guts and in our brains and in our arteries now, right? Joints now. 
We know things are going on now, right? Earth is quaking wind. Now, this is a house of prayer. This next time, from our movement now, you finna go into prayer. Minister Butler's gonna come. 